been a it's been quite the month, and I just want to recap where we're at with uh, the hunting rifle ban from the Liberals. And there's uh, been quite a bit happening, so I just want to walk us through where we're at so far and where we think this is going to go. So just first up, the Liberals introduced at the 11th hour at the end stage of committee in the most underhanded and sneaky way they possibly could, the largest hunting rifle ban in Canadian history. That was four weeks ago. And since then, right off the bat, they denied all of this. They said Conservatives were spreading misinformation, that we were misleading the public, we were fear-mongering. This wasn't a hunting rifle ban was their position. But then of course once the list came out and hunters and farmers and indigenous hunters and rural northern Canadians and sports shooters saw this list, of course it was fully established and is now widely recognized that of course, yes, there are many hunting rifles and shotguns that will be banned through this Liberal amendment. And so of course once this came out, then they talked about, oh well, we'll, we'll consult on it, we'll consult on it. And then we had the Assembly of First Nations and a number of other First Nations communities, including the, Northwest, the Premier of the Northwest Territories that, of course, she represents so many Inuit and Indigenous Canadians and Northern Canadians. She came out against this. The AFN came out against this. And then all of a sudden we start hearing from the Prime Minister, well, we're consulting, uh, but we are firm on the definition. They're willing to make tweaks, they said. But the problem is with the definition. It's the definition that bans hundreds, if not thousands, of models of commonly used hunting rifles. That is the problem. And they've been unequivocal about this. They will not be moving or budging or tweaking or watering down the definition. And the definition is the problem. The definition is what is impacting the 2.3 million gun owners in this country, including hundreds of thousands of hunters, farmers, and Indigenous Canadians. So now we're hearing that there may be, the Liberals are starting to try to make some moves of further consultations. But the reality is, if the outcome is predetermined, if they are not going to change the definition that is the largest hunting rifle ban in Canadian history, the outcome is predetermined and any consultation is in bad faith. So what's important for Canadians to know that any Liberal move to talk about consultation is all smoke and mirrors. It's to convince people that they're doing something, that they're listening to Canadians, they're trying to say that they're listening to northern and rural Canadians, but the outcome is predetermined, so any consultation is already established in bad faith. The only option moving forward is for them to pull this, this amendment back. They have to pull this off the table. That is the only way that this gets fixed, if they ever hope to regain the trust of rural and northern Canadians, Canadians who hunt, farmers, Indigenous Canadians, sports shooters, that's the only way to fix this, to pull this completely off the table. That's what we've asked for from the beginning and that's what we will continue to push for at committee, in the House, and in all of the work that we're doing on Bill C-21. They have to pull this off the table. Again, this is the largest hunting rifle ban in Canadian history. Any move to consult from the Liberals, the outcome is predetermined, it is being done in bad faith, it is smoke and mirrors from the Liberals. So that's our position. I wanted to provide a four-week update on this before we go into the holidays. Sure. The Conservative Party, what guns ought to be banned? Mm. Do you think, I mean, I, I don't know, none, some, which ones? Well, certainly I believe, or we believe as Conservatives in strict gun laws in Canada. We need to ensure that only the most responsible and law-abiding, train-tested and vetted Canadians uh, ever come near firearms, and every hunter and farmer and firearm owner would agree with that. And what Pierre Polyev has put forward is that what we need to do so that no more politics is played in this from Liberals or any other party is to bring uh, firearms experts at the table, Olympic sports shooters, police officers, border officers, Indigenous Canadians to the table, an expert panel, to once and for all establish a classification system that's fair and makes sense. That's what we would do if we were in government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what it is, is that first off, we want it to be polled. But the bloc working with the Liberals at committee forced, we're, we're, go we're going to force, pardon me, two meetings. Two meetings at committee. Two meetings is a joke. To, to say that we can appropriately consult all the Canadians impacted by this in two meetings is offensive. So we tried to make the best of a worst case scenario. We put forward an amendment to say, fine, if you want to force us to do this, we want 20 meetings minimum. And we do believe there should be committee travel to rural and northern Canada, including Indigenous communities. And the minister has to come answer for this at committee. That's what we moved to make the best of a worst case scenario. The Liberals spot us on that last night. So what we would like to see, given that they're doing this in bad faith, any consultation we know is not legitimate, given they've been very clear on the outcome, 
we would like to see them pull this. But if we, if we are forced to do meetings, then we better do them right and we better go to northern Canada and remote communities and rural Canada and ensure that everyone who's impacted by this is consulted. But again, the best solution and really the only solution to this, given the predetermined outcome from the Prime Minister, is that they pull this amendment off the table. Merci, bonne question. La musique vient d'arrêter de l'autre côté. Parce qu'on voit qu'elle est merci. On voit qu'il y a des, des libéraux qui aiment mieux s'amuser que de parler de choses sérieuses aujourd'hui. Euh, premièrement, il faut rappeler une histoire courte. Là, on fait un rappel que l'amendement la, qui a été déposé au Comité de la sécurité publique il y a quatre semaines de façon très insidieuse. La, la, la plus grande interdiction d'armes de chasse dans l'histoire du Canada. Euh, les, pas les Premières Nations, les chasseurs, tout le monde, lorsqu'ils ont réalisé ce qui se passait ici, ont levé des boucliers et. Avec, à juste raison. Là, maintenant, ce que le gouvernement essaie de faire, c'est qu'il cherche des solutions pour s'en sortir. Parce que là, on voit du côté du Bloc québécois, entre autres, les députés du Bloc à travers le Québec ont été attaqués de toutes parts par les communautés de chasseurs. Les communautés autochtones également ont soulevé l'enjeu de façon très forte. Et là, les libéraux cherchent un moyen de s'en sortir. Mais en même temps, on a Justin Trudeau qui a confirmé à plusieurs reprises qu'il ne changerait pas. Donc, c'est juste... Les libéraux, ce qu'ils veulent faire actuellement, c'est d'étirer le temps. Donc, si on parle de plusieurs semaines, plusieurs mois, à la fin, le résultat va être le même parce que Justin Trudeau l'a confirmé. Vous, été, mettons, mois, mois, Nous, ce qu'on demande tout simplement, c'est que l'amendement que soit retiré tout simplement, là, parce que c'est complètement une, une opération de Mais chambre que les libéraux essaient de faire. Vous proposez quand même quelque chose, un processus de consultation. Ben nous, de notre côté. Oui, mais d'un autre côté, ce qu'on propose, c'est que le gouvernement avec Poilier, le gouvernement conservateur, ce qu'on ferait premièrement, on dépolitiserait l'enjeu des armes à feu. On, on aurait des comités d'experts qui, qui concernent des groupes de policiers, des groupes de victimes, les Autochtones. Tout le monde serait ensemble pour définir c'est quoi la sécurité publique avec les armes à feu au Canada. Et parce que quand on parle d'armes, c'est tellement technique à un moment donné. Et lorsque la politique intervient, on, ça tire partout. Puis, euh, mauvais jeu de mots, mais c'est un jeu de mots. Ça tire à gauche, à droite. Et puis, euh, on se ramasse avec des situations comme on veut aujourd'hui. Mais là, ce qu'on voit, c'est les libéraux, le Bloc québécois sont ramassés dans une position vraiment de faiblesse face à la communauté des chasseurs et spécialement les Autochtones à travers le pays. Et pour nous, ce qu'il faut actuellement, c'est de retirer cet amendement-là qui est au comité. C'est la seule chose à faire. Merci. Yeah, so the, the Bloc Québécois is working with the Liberals to force two committee meetings to do the testimony. Again, we passed the testimony phase, and certainly no consultations were done on this. We're certainly hearing from thousands of hunters across the country how they feel about this. That's very clear, and Indigenous Canadians. So at committee, they forced a meeting to force two meetings. So we tried to make the best of a situation in that regard and said, fine, you want to do this, let's do it right. I would have put forward 50 meetings, but I don't believe anyone, uh, the other opposition parties would have agreed. So we said, let's do 20, that's not unheard of. Let's do 20, let's do it right, let's go to these uh, communities. The Liberals fought us very hard on that. And again, I think that just adds to the point that they don't really want to do meaning meaningful consultations. They predetermine the outcome. So any consultations they're doing uh, aren't legitimate because the Prime Minister made it very clear last week. He's like, I'm not budging. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm not budging on the definition. So that's what's concerning to us. So again, we will make the best of the situation at committee. Uh, that way, at least uh, Conservatives can be at the table. But any consultations Liberals are doing, we feel is in bad faith. So we will continue to work together. Frankly, until this happened at committee, we worked together fairly well. All parties will say that. But when they pulled this underhanded amendment at the 11th hour in the most sneaky way possible, that's when a red line was drawn, when they brought forward the largest assault on hunters in Canadian history. Do you want to hear um, the minister again? Sorry? Do you want to hear from the minister? I think it would be great if he came to committee and uh, answered the many questions from hunters. Absolutely. That's why we put it uh, as part of that amendment. Yeah. Or amendment to the motion, pardon me. Liberal government believes that guns that were designed solely to kill, I'm trying to remember their talking point, guns designed mm -hmm. solely to kill the maximum amount of people, you know, should not be allowed on the streets. What's your specific answer to that? that guns are designed to mm -hmm. kill people. Why should they be? Well, a few things. So first of all, they've cast a very wide net of what that means. And obviously, based on the reaction, they've caught hundreds, if not thousands, of models of commonly used hunting rifles in there. So they said it's not a hunting rifle ban, but clearly if these firearms have been used by hunters for a century, those are hunting rifles now. So that's first off. Uh, the second thing is there is a raw utility of the def in the definition they're trying to ban. There is a raw utility in these firearms. We heard from the NDP from Nunavut, for example. She has said that these firearms protect her her people 
people from polar bears. It's not something we think about in Ottawa or in Toronto, but that's something that people who live in Nunavut have to think about all the time. How do they protect themselves from predatory animals in the Canadian wilderness? We can also talk about what the wild boar problem in uh, southern Saskatchewan and Alberta that's coming up from the United States. Extremely dangerous. Your best tool of defense when they attack you en masse with their tusks, and they're very fast and very sneaky, would be a semi-automatic hunting rifle. Uh, when you talk to farmers, it's the same thing. There is a utility for hunters and farmers and those who go into the Canadian wilderness. If you face off against, against a grizzly bear, your best tool of defense is as a semi-automatic hunting rifle or shotgun. So there is a utility argument that if they had done some consultation, they may be aware of that. But as I mentioned last week, the only consultation they can point to is from 2018 when they went to Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal and Fredericton, which are great cities, but there's no polar bears in any of those cities aside from the zoos. So again, this is just a government that's not really consulting with people properly. And as Indigenous Canadians continue to remind us, consultation is not just, hey, I spoke to you in the hall. It's sitting down and talking about compromise. And so we're not hearing that from the Prime Minister, though. He's not budging on that definition. And as the Yukon ND, or pardon me, the Nunavut NDP said, this puts people's lives at risk. And as the Northwest Territories Premier said, her people will starve without these tools. She said that right here to you guys last week. And the AFN has been unequivocal. They oppose Bill C-21 outright. So that's pretty clear. And I would say actually to that, there was a Liberal member of the committee who sort of downplayed that, said, oh, they don't understand it. I do find that quite a condescending comment to make about the Indigenous communities. I think they understand better than anyone the tools they need to hunt and protect their families. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.